The mind is the field of the I, the ego. What is the mind? All this that you see spread around and within yourself, right? At the center of it lies the feeling of I. If the aham, the ahanta is well placed, then the mind is beautiful. Kindly see what is your self-definition. I decides the mind. You know, you say I'm looking at this wall and this and this and this and all this is mind. But depending on who you are, what you are looking at totally changes. This wall could inspire surrender in you or it could provoke jealousy in you depending on who you take yourself to be. So pay attention to what you have been thinking of yourself. Pay attention to what your acts reveal you to be. If all the time you are only thinking of your work and job then for sure you have taken yourself to be to be to be an employee a worker so pay attention if if 18 hours of the day i am totally identify with promoting the interests of the shareholders then koham has been answered for me and totally falsely answered for me i am saying i am an employee if all the time my wife is dominating my mind i'm thinking of her i'm thinking of my relationship and i'm afraid and i'm somehow try to salvage things it's very clear that koham has again been answered for me i need not say aham brahmasmi that statement is no more possible i have already said aham So just pay attention to what this I is. If the I is rightly understood, if the I is immersed in Brahm, in nothingness, then the mind will be a beautiful expanse. That beautiful expanse of the mind is also called paradise. Paradise is nothing. But a vast field having a surrendered eye at the center, the world itself. Hmm? The world in general, scared of death. It's like we see people literally shivering and... But why? Because we cannot die. We are so afraid of the death because we cannot die. Nobody likes death because you are immortal. How can you like something which is not your nature? Not only do you not like death, you also do not like bondage. You also do not like ignorance. You also do not like falseness. How do you feel when somebody lies to you? How do you feel? You do not like lies because truth is your nature. Similarly, you do not like death because immortality is your nature. Immortality is your nature but the world is telling you you were born and you will die. So you don't like this. You don't like this. This dislike is expressed as the search for security and as fear. Nothing else. It is an expression of facts of life. Facts of life. I am bound. I'm bound. I want to go, but I cannot get up and go. So I'm bound. I'm bound. It is an expression of facts. I must become free. Of that you don't know anything. It is not a fact at all. Please pay attention. 
sage is saying that the one eligible to read the scriptures is the one who says I am bound I must become free pay attention to two parts of this statement I am bound comes from the facts facts the very facts I cannot lift a stone weighing 200 kilograms I am limited I am bound I cannot be here and there simultaneously I am bound I want to help you and convince you I am failing I am bound are you getting it? These are the facts of life. The second part, I must be free. This is not a fact. No fact will, in, will ever inspire you to be free. This is the mystic urge of the heart. You will never know from where it comes, but it keeps coming. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free. This is what makes man sing. This is the passion of the artists. The poets, I want to be free. Give me freedom or give me death. Yeah, this is not a fact. This is not logical. This is not rational. This is coming from the heart. Hmm? Sir, truth is uh, beyond this uh, unlimited by space and time. Mind cannot understand it. So, what are we trying to understand actually? I mean, what? What is, what is everybody pursuing? What are we trying to understand? We are trying to get rid of our condition. That's all that we can say. We are in a particular condition. Huh? Or we take ourselves to be in a particular condition and we don't like it. That's the maximum we can say. So the mind does not like itself. What are you trying to get rid of? Yourself. Nothing else. In this condition, if you say that there is something definite, positive, affirmative that you are trying to achieve, then it would just be a blabber. So then this who query is also at a mental level? Yes, of course at a mental <laughs> level. The ego asks this to, the, to itself. What do you think? You can ever get a truthful answer to who am I? No. Who am I consists of seeing the facts of your life. Who am I does not mean that you will come up with a ready-made answer. I am Atma Brahma. Aham Brahma Asmi. No. Who am I means see that right now you are just a greedy man. So the answer is I am greed. Who am I? Lust. Who am I? Anger. Who am I? Insecurity. Who am I? Ignorance. And when you see that, in that seeing, both lust, ignorance, insecurity and the I, the question, the questioner, all dissolve. That is truth. This dissolution is truth. So the mind is the problem and the mind is the tool. Yes. And both the tool and the problem with respect to the mind itself. Yes. So when, when it is said that one summon a loki. Yes, yes, yes. So what do you mean by that? Simple. Look at yourself. Just as you are fond of looking at everything. Look at yourself. And looking at yourself by grace happens to be a rational activity as well. Why? Because I am the one I claim is suffering. If you have a wound here, won't you look at it? If you have a wound here, won't you look at it? So look at the wound. Look at the wound. The world may have given you a wound, right? A, a stray stone came from somewhere and hit you here. And now this is bleeding. Now do you look at the stone? Do you look at the stone or do you look at the wound? wound? That's who am I? The world may have given you all this suffering, but right now I need to look at the sufferer. The world is the stone that is giving me all this suffering, but right now I need to look at the sufferer. So who am I happens to be a mystical as well as a rational question. But I am the sufferer. Yes. Yeah. I am the sufferer. I am the sufferer. When we are saying that, look at the wound. Yes. Who is 
everywhere everywhere Every, so look anywhere so look anywhere you are suffering from head to toe so look anywhere that makes things easy for you right look anywhere look at any aspect of your life look at any experience that you have every single experience is steeped in ignorance so you need not be choosy or selective you can look at anything and whatever you will look at you will only see your foolishness without exception that makes it easy right easy for the easy for the looker easy for the one who is suffering but does not want to suffer easy for the one who is saying i want to know what is this why is this happening If it is your condition, then you won't have asked this question. So it cannot be your condition. And if it is not your condition, why are you bothering? Why are you asking imaginary questions? If the mind becomes such a sadist that it loses all sensitivity, then what should the mind do? If are you that one? If you are that one, then how can you ask this question? This question can be asked only by the one who is suffering. not by someone who is negating the fact of his suffering no a uh, person is suffering who is that person let's say i am that person why should we say let's say are you that person you couldn't be asking that question then don't you see that no because i recognize that i am suffering but i do take actions to check it no you then there is a deep underlying belief that actions are not possible or that no action will suffice if i am suffering and i see that i am suffering and i am not happy with the suffering yet i don't act to give some succor to me it only means that i am saying that well you know no hope no hope son <clears throat> go close to it had there been no hope then you would have become perfectly aligned with whatever is happening if you are still uneasy with it it means that there is hope see this is what happens now you are telling me something that hope looks but nothing really works right that you are saying that there is hope but it does not touch me go close to your situation you are saying nothing really works yet there is something which is saying that something will work it had there been nothing within you which was promising you liberation you would not even be asking the question you would not even be present here that is hope but hope is a bad virtue no it is not a hope about the future it is a hope into the unknown the future whenever you think of the future you have an image in mind you want to predict it here you don't know anything right here you have no idea no concept of what is liberation and who can liberate you yet you have hope so this is not hope of the ordinary kind this is not a hope of an object this hope itself is the proof and the instrument of liberation both together <clears throat>